Hey. Hello? Um, I see your screen. I see, um, I did not mean to click on reload. Fixing my microphone. Okay. Um, go to messages. Hey, I heard something. Hi. Yay. Cool. Okay. That should be good uh, now. Kel. Nope. K-E-L-S. Yes, there we go. Um, yeah, I saw that you sent stuff. I haven't downloaded it. Uh, Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, content. And then this is just some, I don't know, network? network. Yeah, so, so it's like... Practice say <laughs> yeah we're we're trying to practice with like uh yeah i guess networks i don't know it was the weirdest thing i've tried to do because it was like i was following along with his like lecture and then the job is to build a program that does the client portion but like the instructions were very vague and like, yeah i've noticed that in a few of the networking classes um and I'm like, I, I, I followed along and number one, what he showed in class didn't end up working. And I, and it took oh, me like way too long to get this version to work. And I got some help from my TA. Okay. But, but at the end of the day, I'm like, I, I'm very long. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I know, I understand I need to like repeat this like uh, socket structure for my, uh, for my client. So I know like you make your socket and then there's a binding step. And I kind of understand some of what's going on here, but I just, I'm very lost. And then I'm also not sure how to go about testing this with you. Um, yeah, um, testing networky stuff is uh, annoying. You, yeah. you basically need to have two sides working uh, in order to do anything, um, yeah. any testing. Um, but, uh, oh, um, I don't see your screen share. Uh, but you can do you can do is like netcat to uh, yes. send a I specific saw, yeah. string. Oh, okay, cool. I I saw that where we did we did the netcat and then we set it. Uh, like I put in a like I here I put in a port number randomly, and like okay. uh, I saw that in the command line. Like, hold on, let me change directories. Yes, five hundred three. This is just where I put this for right now, and then what if I do make. It'll yeah, rerun wonder, it. Does it Is does it... it make if I do make? Yes, it does. Mine was working, but I might something. be in the wrong place. Hold <laughs> um, on. Oh, and you're using uh, threads also? Yeah, yeah, hold on. I'm in, I'm in the wrong place. Hold on. Okay. Uh... Uh, so, uh, I guess I would, I would start off without threads uh, and just mm -hmm. do single-threaded networking. That's uh gonna be a lot easier to debug okay um although it looks like okay so you have mutex stuff mutex lock and unlock and then you uh okay um let me yeah you can take you can take it take your time to like get situated um and again i this was like the way this class this this assignment was structured like for like he's like this is what we're doing and i'm like okay <laughs> okay oh right right you're following yeah. along what somebody else uh have yeah. you so, so have you done networking in c at all before no and that was the thing like this uh, came out of nowhere and then my other class that did like intro to c where we covered some of the stuff there was no networking like have you done threads in c we did like you helped me with threads um a, oh, like a cool. little bit in that class <laughs> okay but yeah. it's like I'm. It's like I. I feel like I'm, like trying to nail, you know, Jello to a tree, right? I'm like. Oh, oh that sounds difficult. <laughs> um. But this okay. one, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I have wait. this working. No, you could uh freeze the Jello. Yeah, I could freeze the Jello. That's true. Can you but then freeze Jello? Shatter? 
I don't know. <laughs> I think you could. I think you could. Because it's... You could uh, it... freeze the jello with a yeah. hole in the middle. <laughs> Let's Just... cheat here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that. So, uh, what would free? So, I think we should maybe just start by, I'm. I guess. Uh, what what state is it in? Have you been able to do networking at all? So, so I I, I got this to work where oh, when okay. I when I ran this. Um, hold on. Let me let me go through and remember how I did this. Okay. Uh, what was the what's the command to set up your like. I give it, I give it the, hold on. Number one, I have to run it first. I know I have to run it first, so it's running. And then I open up a new, hold on, a new one of these. Yeah, so I I usually have um, two different shells open. One of them will be the server and the other one will be the client. Um, and you have to have the client, uh, the server running before you do the client. Yeah, yeah. Um, but which one counts as which? Uh, well, so hold on. Okay. So hold on, hold on, and then I'm just gonna go to my. I forget the command. You you mentioned it before, where I tell it Net, the. Netcat? Yeah, is it NC or is it? It's NC. Yeah. Yeah, NC, and then this is running on Tux three and then i think it's that what did i say 2033 so you might want to do something like echo high and then pipe that into netcat and then uh server name well i think and then the way that, the way i had this set up is yeah. like then give it i run it on this one and then i put in like the this name is like foo oh yeah okay yeah you can do that too and, and then you do control c control d i mean Hold on. And then I think NC to, uh, talks 3, 2300, right? No, 2033. Um, hold on. Let me make sure this is right. And then we'll call this bar. And then is it uh, working? Yeah, so then they joined. And then, oh. Hello? Is it working? No, maybe it's not working. Okay, so you're... No. The thing that you're running... Oh! Ooh. Oh, this is terrible. And then it tells me, yeah, so Bar is telling me, hello, this is terrible. So they're, okay. like, talking at each other. Okay. That seems good. Is that... That's what we want. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. But then the, um... The... The, the program chat serve... Okay. <laughs> But what I'm confused by, yeah, is like, shouldn't this be showing me um, what they're saying to each other, or no, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, okay. If the let's go into the chat serve dot c. Yeah. Um, how long is this? It's only a couple hundred and something lines. So what does this do? Where does it actually send? Um, so, okay, so you go through a linked list, and then, yeah, as long as you're not sending to yourself, you send, so you're sending, when you get something from one client, you're sending that thing to all the other clients, if right. you wanted to also see it, uh, in where, the thing that you're looking at right now, where you ran right. chat serve, you would need yeah. to, um, like do right here printf uh whatever it was right that's uh yeah that's where it would okay that come out. that might just be me being because there was a part in like the 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 lecture i was watching where like that was working for a bit but but i okay. i think i think like like uh we had a print statement and we removed it or i removed it later when i was troubleshooting because originally see. it wasn't working <laughs> i was like what the heck <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, so here's where you would do that, and then where, okay. where did the, um, so it currently prints out something, uh, it prints out zero and one, where does it do that? I don't, I'm not seeing, uh, fprintf? 
here. That might be it. What is I think it's N? I think it's that one. Hold on. It's probably the file descriptor. Uh hold on, I lost myself. Yeah, wait. Yeah, so this this is it. It's printing out n is initially zero and n goes up by one. Up every one, time. right? Uh, what is so? This is just counting how many things are in the list. Yeah, that's that's all this is doing. This is just setting n to what, however many things are on the list. Okay, cool. And initially that's zero, and I'm guessing this gets run every time. Uh. Somebody joins. You add a new every time the I new thing is added. I guess well, I could find out and have another one join because I think we set the max to was it five? I don't remember. Uh, uh okay. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Max. Um, Do you have the dot h file? No. Fine. No. No. Um. I so don't know a, if we did set it, but I. You have a five here on the listen for the socket. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's five active connections at once. I uh, yeah, I'm not super familiar with the the arguments to listen. I I got that one from like the manual page uh, when I looked cool. up. And I believe that's that controls how many people, but I'm not again, I'm like not super confident. <laughs> okay, let's let's go look at the man page. Yeah, at what is that argument? The backlog 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 argument defines the maximum length to which the queue of pending connections Oh. Yeah, so that that's uh that is how many connections, not how many connections total can you have, but okay. how many uh, can be um, not, can be in the waiting state. Like when they first connect and before you, uh, mm -hmm. before you open the connection. So like they are sitting there waiting. At some point you have like a maximum weight queue. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, maximum you, can only, you can only you can only have so many people waiting before you start rejecting. I see. Um, okay. So if a connection request arrives when it's full, the client may receive an error of econ refused or the request may be ignored so that a later attempt at reattempt at connection succeeds. Okay, cool. So, cool. Um, <sighs> I'm just saying, like, it, yeah, so it's continuing to increase here. Yeah. Cool. And then my other ones, my other chats, or, yeah, they see, they see. Not Dave and Dave, so gotcha. it is working. So you, um, so you have uh whatever the person says. The very first thing that person says is the name. Yeah. And then everything after that is intended to chat to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Seems like it all works. Uh, yeah. So, so this part, this part, I I was able to get it working, and okay. so now I'm tasked with making the client, and then making so when I run in the command line, um, and this is where I'm I'm a little confused, and it's partially because of the vagueness of the assignment. Um, okay. I'm confused if, because because uh, he had mentioned that you can instead of setting uh the port number like instead of hard coding it into our program 
I don't know if you can use a client to have it pick the port number. I might be misunderstanding that, but that's like one of the things that needs to happen in the client. So I guess when you run a command line, I guess you can start the chatting. Like it just happens. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I'll pull up his exact text okay. for for this. But yeah. I was like, so what? The, the yeah. server, the server should have a port, and then the mm -hmm. client needs to know what port to connect to. Okay, so that won't change. Yeah, the okay. server is going to be on a fixed port. I mean, there are there's like multicast DNS, which uh, -huh. uh I'm not super familiar with, but they it's UDP and instead of TCP. Oh, I guess I don't know. Oh yeah, you have sock stream. So this is TCP. <laughs> this is supposed to be TCP. Yeah. 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 And um so multicast DNS, you know how you can like um you have like a printer and you put it on your network and then right. other computers on the network just know about it. Yeah. The printer is broadcasting on UDP port, uh, the broadcast port, whatever it is, uh, yeah. an IP address. And then, um, and then every other computer knows that it can go listen to the broadcast channel and Got it. read and, then the printer says, like, here I am, here's my IP and port, and then... But okay. I, unless... I I don't think that's... No, I don't think that's what... he Here's here's the what he said. Hold on. Uh, I'm just going to paste it. This was his okay. clarification. And I'm like, what? He <laughs> says, first, um, the name... Okay. And I, I'm assuming name is, like, where I... The chatter name, right? I'm assuming that. Also, that corresponds to, like, our... our our structure that we had um first the name should be taken from the command line second use threads to split the program into two concurrent parts uh an uh analogous to the version of the chat program like we this is he's he's actually referencing the other courses chat program but um okay but it's supposed to be like that um okay so taking the taking the name from the command line that seems doable. Um, the second, use threads to split the program into two. Hello? Oh, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm listening, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have good cutoff on the, the low end of the microphone. Uh, Second, use threads to split the program into two concurrent parts, analogous to the version of the chat program we wrote in earlier videos. Uh, well, so I could imagine two different threads being useful on the chat, on the client side. One of them is waiting for you to type stuff. Yeah. And the other is yeah. waiting, listening to the incoming socket for messages from other people that i that that makes sense it's just what was bizarre with this lecture okay. is yeah. just like here we're doing a server now go make the client and it's like i'm like what like <laughs> i've never done this like <laughs> what am i missing uh um because i know you're... so i know that we have to do another socket Mm -hmm. And then we do a bond, and then we call the uh, to connect. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know, like what how clients are supposed to be structured. I guess maybe that's like the best way for me to phrase this. I'm just confused. No. Um. Uh, so the client, basically, it, the client will do a, a lot of the same stuff that the server does. Yeah. There's, there, code-wise, is going to be basically the same. Basically, um, yeah. The, This, is, this yeah. is what I had started with, and then I, like, I stopped, because I'm like, I don't, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, so... Uh, again, I would start with just a single threaded client uh, that is able to 
send yeah. one message and then receive one message. Okay. Uh, at a time. Um, so let's see. It looks like you have. Okay, so you have a bunch of code already for the client. Um, hold on, I hold on. Because what I was doing was I was basically, I was like trying to follow along with with like this original structure that I had done. Okay. So I yeah. have my sock. Yeah. So, uh, so you have to create a. Like I, I don't even know all the different steps off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, uh, like I would, I would, let's go look up C like find client yeah. example. Uh, except we that need. Was where, that yeah. was where I saw this like host ent, but I'm like I don't even know what this is. Like what? <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, host entity. Um, it's information about yeah. the host. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's like. What it, what the host name is, and then I'm not okay. sure what else. Uh, like what kind of connection? Whether, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's go look up C socket. Uh, yeah, C socket client example, and see what we get. C sharp, simple client server application in C. Okay. Geeks for geeks, man. Okay, so the first part of any socket <laughs> is uh, they, uh, they're they're up there with uh with uh Stack Overflow. Yeah, yeah. But they also a little bit. I've been finding like a lot of padding on some of the articles of like, like they're just they'll... like random words or what. Like uh, so this Keyword? is an article on having a client side in C um, and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to find like C was written in blah 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 by so and so oh, yeah. at Bell Labs mm -hmm. and like that's clearly only sort of related at best uh, <laughs> to writing a client in C okay so the first part um, create the socket itself uh, so that is just a data structure Right. That you need to create. Um, and then uh, created with a socket call, returns an integer, and you need to specify what kind of thing it is. So it's uh, right. socket stream. And then. Socket stream got that one. Cool. And the protocol is internet protocol. Um, okay, cool. And then. You connect by calling connect and passing in, uh, let's see, here we specify the IP address. Oh yeah, so in order to call connect, that's where you need to create the uh, socket or the uh, host entity. I guess we can just read this code here. So the server okay. address, the server address is what you send in, um, in connect in this spot in that spot okay yeah and um the server address is here it's a sock adder in uh, okay here it's being cast to a sock adder uh yeah. i think the idea so sock adder in i believe is yeah. the same thing as sock adder plus a couple fields so okay and the, the fields are all laid out in the same way in memory, so it's okay to just cast it as if it was the other kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. No, like, that that's similar to what we were doing, like, kind of here, so. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so you get the... Uh, so you create a socket, uh, and then you get a socket file descriptor, then you uh, okay. create the server struct, and you fill it with information about the server. Okay. Then you call connect, and you want to okay. connect your the socket that you got from the mm -hmm. call to socket to. Okay. The, you're connecting to the server. Yeah. Um, 
and then you get back a it looks like you get back a status and you can say check that status and then do different things based on it um okay. this would receive a single message and then print it out and that's it uh, okay. that actually seems like well we it, don't want to receive a single message we want to we could start off by writing a client that sends a single message okay um and then uh and then exits uh, <laughs> uh yeah okay that that seems like a a good place to start to me uh um, okay so actually maybe we can just straight copy this uh yeah so chat c I don't know. What do you want? To, I'll just call it client dot c. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh no. <laughs> White space. Uh, okay, that looks good. And then here we want to send. Uh, and then here, where does this get its data from? Oh, right here. Okay, so instead of that, we'll do is equal to. I think you can do this uh my uh i guess uh name cool right and then we send i i don't think send has exactly the same argument order let me go look that up see man send Takes in send sent to socket file descriptor. Um, so we got socket file descriptor. That's good. And then the buffer, and then the length, and then the flags. Oh, okay. I guess it does. It has exactly the same format. Um, so if we compile and run this, oh, but we have to set here this port. Uh, to 2033, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the address, um, I think this would be anything running on the same computer. I think that's what this means. Uh, so, so the, the, the Tux 3 that I was using in the... As long as you, if you compile this and run it on that same computer, it should, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, it should connect to the server that's running on that same computer on this port number, okay, um, yeah, yeah, use some un unused port number, yeah. Um, another thing that I like doing while testing is having, uh, having it choose a random port. Um, there's a way if, if you give this, uh, zero, that. That might be what he meant when he was talking about it choosing something, and I just didn't follow. So that might be uh, it. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you put a zero here, it will the the operating mm -hmm. system knows what ports are available, and it'll it'll give you one. Oh. Um, and the reason for that is because sometimes if you're testing, you're like uh, likely to have things not work correctly, and so you yeah. might not close the socket correctly. Um, oh. And so then it might have like a stale thing. There's also, I think there's a way to, there's a flag for like reusing um, a uh, a port. If it's currently in use, you can, I, I'm not exactly sure how that part works. I, I don't go into that a whole lot. Let's try it with 2033 and see what happens. See what um, okay. So I'm gonna go back to the server and um, make, I guess. And now the server is running. So now on the client, I should be able to. Um, I guess I'll go into the make file and add. Yeah, I, I didn't um, do that one. Oh, you have chat. Oh no, you don't. Okay. No, I just have um, the server. Yeah. All right. So. Do the same thing, but for uh, run client, 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 and 
and so on. Um, oh, let me... <laughs> copy that and send it to you. There. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then client more of those uh, run client no rule to make client.c needed oh did I not save oh chat client.c okay um, let me save this as client.c okay uh, and then Okay, <laughs> uh, we got some compilers, so not allowed to do that. Uh, okay, I don't remember exactly what the syntax is, so maybe that'll work. Cool. Alrighty, so let's see what the server did, if anything. It got a zero. Yay! So we, we did it. We made a client. Okay. Um, so then uh, we could extend the client, make it do a little more than just that. Um, so after sending the name, we could... Uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> This should be sterlen of string data, and we have not include string dot h, and then so after that we want to, well, so I, I guess it's up to you. Like, where do you want to go after? Or uh, first, I should wait here until until you have this or do you have questions about what we've done so far well i'm just gonna like reorder my stuff okay okay and then you had sent me the linux manual page for oh whoops i sent you the wrong page that uh i meant to send you this page um whoops uh this is the page that has the C code on it. Yeah, okay. Uh, for okay. Client. For the client. Okay. C. There. Now you can tell where the link actually is because there's some text <laughs> surrounding it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so reusing my struct. So this is it's like the same kind of structure. That that makes sense. Uh and so for in this case you you we did set it just to this port that I manually set, but later on we can my question is do you, in my in my server uh code would I set the port number to zero to have it automatically figure it out or would i leave it at 20 like i manually set it there in the server but then my client can be you, set to zero where the os figures out which one it should be no 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 so the server would be the one that would uh set it to oh. zero and then okay. the server so when i do that i also yeah. have the server figure out what port it got and print that yeah. on the command line oh um, okay yeah, but there's a reuse port. Let me look that up. Uh, yeah. See reuse port. Um, how to reuse port in socket server application? Yeah. Uh, reuse. Um. 
Yeah, so TCP sockets normally aren't reusable for a while, a few minutes, unless they had the blah options set before they were bound. Um, so this somewhat decreases robustness, but should be fairly safe to use in testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, so we should set this flag, um, and then then, but only during uh development. During production, it should be not set. Um, let's see. Kill the process that binds the port and start again. Yeah. Okay. So we want to have this option set when, with set sock opt. So um, so let's we want to in the server side chat serve. We want to um, to do set that using set sock opt during dev and not during um, prod. Okay. Uh, so then let's go look up. C set sock opt. Um, I was hoping for a man page, but maybe the stack overflow. You can add Compound literal. So SOL socket. SO reuse adder. I think we want to use SO reuse adder and SO reuse uh, sock or er, port. Um. Okay. Is that a thing? So reuse port, yeah. Reuse adder and reuse port. Okay. Looks like. Where do they actually write the code? Oh no. Oh, that is terrible highlighting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well anyway. So we have uh so here's reuse adder and then where is reuse port? Example two. May not be supported in older kernels. Okay, that's fine. And then reuse port here. Okay, so um, so it creates a socket with a TCP, and then <laughs> why, why? <laughs> That's a great comment. Okay, <laughs> it's telling us the port. It's. It is telling us that it's the port. You're right. That's, I agree. That's pretty bad. That's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> that's 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 what I now I understand when people get like really salty about like comments sometimes. Sorry, yeah. I'm like moving away from my mic. Uh, but yeah, now I get. Yeah, that's that's just like why? Why would you? Okay, but okay, they did. <laughs> um. Uh, okay, so we take the so we call set sock opt on the file descriptor and then sol socket, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, and then sol reuse port and then flag, which is one, and then size of flag, which nice is of... int. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go do that. Um, socket here, so we have sock, so we can do set sock. Okay. Uh, opt on sock and soul socket. So 
reuse. S O reuse. Reuse port. Port. And then flag size of flag. So we're setting this. I think what this is saying is we're setting this field to have this value, and we need to set the size of that value uh, because the set sock opt can probably be used to set a lot of different things. Yeah. Have different sizes. That's a guess. Um, and then, so yeah, I think we would do this and this. And then we should be able to reuse port 2033 over and over again, and it should be fine. Okay. Okay. Um, which is a, that's a better way of doing it than having it uh, pick a random port, tell you what that was. Then when you run the yeah. client, you have to tell it what port the server got. Um, cool. Um, okay, so... Um, Let's try that. So the client, I mean, the server that we are currently running doesn't, uh, didn't have that option set. So it might be that if I try to run it again, oh no, it seems like it's fine. Um, so th this time the server didn't have that option set. So I was thinking maybe oh, okay. it would, uh, cool. This time it would tell me, oh no, sorry, that is still in use. Um, but it didn't. So maybe that whole reuse thing wasn't even necessary. <laughs> maybe they've fixed that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, hold on, let me see. Error size of serve. What did I do? What did I do? 114. Serve adder. Stock add in. Are you in the client? Yes. Yeah, chat client. I was I was trying to compile it since I hadn't done that yet. Um. Serve adder. Struct sock adder in. Struct sock adder in. Huh. Struct sock adder in. Oh. Struct add. Oh. Yeah. Right? Serve add. St yeah, yeah. I need the R, right? Sock add address. Yeah. Yeah. Serve. I think that was my problem. Um. Oh, now you're yelling at me for more things. Two Ds. In 14 or in. No, no, no. In uh, 17. Yeah, because I did one. Ooh, okay. That took a while. It did take a while. Let me be really nervous. <laughs> <I'm> like, <what? laughs> okay. Uh, I wonder. I don't know. Um. Okay. Then uh, go ahead and get the. Make sure the server is running, and then go to oh, the. Oh, and then client. and then I run my client. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. What did I call this chat? Well. Okay. So this is running, and then when I run, I'm sorry. When I run my client, does it? Uh, I could run it from. It should work. Where I just run it from, like here, I believe. Yep. Uh. Same machine. Any anywhere that you this run it. So it still has to be on the same machine. Okay, so I have to be oh, Tux 3. I'm on Tux 1. I hate this. Tux, this is Tux 3. Yeah, okay. Huh. Okay. Wait, do you not... I swear, when like, you connect, does it, like, randomly choose? It randomly, it randomly chooses. Yeah, and they oh. don't have it set, so you can pick which one. And then they have, like... Weird. Some of them are, are for, like, specific, like... 
projects going on. Um, anyway, yeah, I've talked to a couple professors about it, and I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, why? Whatever. It doesn't huh. matter. Um, okay. What am I that trying to do? Okay. Weird. Change directory. I saved this here. Okay, and then it should. And then I jump back to my blue one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, it's working. Cool. Hooray. All right, I was I was behind. <laughs> oh no, that's uh I uh You're doing you're doing fine. Um uh gonna, did the server gonna... yeah the server did something and then if i do that again it prints out something again oh that's weird print it out what did it do oh uh it this number it's... is how many people are concurrently connected i guess oh I oh ran... so so you like you you closed that other client and then you ran it again and so now yeah. it's just another one connected but it's still saying zero okay yeah which that seems fine this is just a count of how many people are connected it's it seems like well yeah yeah how many people were connected before that client um okay so then now that the client can connect to the server we can add in a little bit at a time so we we currently say to the server what is our name um right right and that's the whole message i guess uh is this the right format like do i need to put like a new line or anything like that or is that the right format for for the, for the, server the name side? yeah for the server side um like what is what does the server expect we could the go server expects yeah I'm, I'm going to check the thing i i think it's expecting you to have a new line at the end of it um oh you do this you chomp if there is they did yeah, well i i have to do a it was i was gonna put in a chomp but when i was uh trying to get it to work uh i went back to matching their code exactly because it wasn't working <laughs> so i was like no chomping but yes we're doing a chomp <laughs> okay cool um uh, so uh so what is so n is how big of a thing did we receive um and if n is less than zero, then we shut down the socket and we free and we exit. If it's greater than 15, we just set it to 15. If there's a new line, we chomp and then we subtract one from the number of characters. Then we copy mm -hmm. into C arrow name the whatever was there. And then C arrow name at n is now a null character okay uh prefix was this <laughs> that's like the, that that's the name yeah that's the little the prompt yeah. cool and then c add c add i see this is our so linked list yeah created this thing wait hold on Let's see oh i see there's a it's a double, doubly linked list. Where you, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a global C head, I guess, or yeah, there must be. Where did we um, put C head? Hold on, I have to think. Oh. Uh, up at the top, I would think. Yeah. So it's initially. Well, they don't. Well. Since it's in this area, uh, there's an implied yeah. um, equals null. Equals null. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then so in C add, there's uh, C head is set to C. C, which and we're grabbing. C is ah here it is. C next is set to head first. Head. Okay. Yeah. Um. If there was no C head, then 
C head arrow pre or sorry. If there was a C head, then C head pre is set to C and next I see. So it's so you, so that you can go in both directions. It's a doubly linked list. I see what you see Dell and client. What does this do? Um that's kind of long. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so uh, the upshot of all that is, yes, we can just send... I <laughs> uh, kind of got lost. <laughs> we can just send no, this, okay. and that yeah. would be enough to establish the name of the client. Um, I'll just put client name. Uh, it seemed like spaces were allowed. There was no code that cared. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, and then uh, now we can do printf um, type something to say to everyone, and then new line, and then we can, uh, I guess, let's do whatever the server does, or no, not the server. Oh, we don't have anything for this part. Um, so we could use, we need to get input from the command line or from the client yeah. side. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, is there a, do you prefer like get S or? I don't have a preference. Uh, hold on. Okay. Um, so then, uh, yeah, let's use get s, uh, which, see, get, uh, actually, I'm going to look up get input from user and see what the... What's recommended. Yeah, because I remember, <laughs> yeah, that's like, smart. Yeah. Get, get ch and get s and I don't remember... They all have, like, quirks. Why? One I of them is like banned. You should never use it. It's only left in for uh, posterity sake. Like yeah. For yeah, for legacy programs. Yeah. Uh, to get okay. user input, you can use the scanf function. Okay. Yeah, we could use scanf. Um. User input strings. and save the text. Okay, yeah, I guess let's use scanf, which takes in a format string and a uh, input buffer. Um, and what else does it take in? That's it. Okay, cool. So we'll scan that in, and uh, I guess we can printf. Um, okay, sending to everyone line input um, int result is equal to that, and if result is not equal to one. Uh, scanf returns how many things was it able to scan. And here we have only one thing for it to scan. So if it's not one, then we should print some sort of error. Scanf failed. Uh, okay. Returned. And then a new line and a result and exit uh, negative one. Sure, why not? Um, okay, and then sending that. Then we actually want to send 
sock D, and then this time input and stir len on input and zero. Um, and I think you can do here, you can say 1023 to make sure that it's at most that many long. Oh, oh. either that or it needs it to be that long. Okay. I forget. Let's do percent s to begin with, and let's not sabotage ourselves. <laughs> let's uh, make it harder. Yeah. Let's not. Uh, when we run this program, let's not try to do Stack Overflow or anything, or by inputting yeah. a number that, or inputting an input that's like way too long. Um, okay, so I think that should work. Yeah. So let's try that so the server is still running the client uh let's go into the client and run the client nope uh i missed a semicolon um here Alrighty, let's try that uh so right now we won't be able to tell uh whoops that's not what i meant to do oh i wonder if that messed anything up okay cool okay so we won't be able to tell like the uh unless we we could go modify the server to uh print out what message it got from what client and then we'd be able to tell that would be the easiest way to tell whether or not this worked okay um at least that i can think of um i'm sure if somebody somebody somewhere knows a better way anyway uh <laughs> serve dot c and then we can go in and um I guess now we need to figure out where does it get a, a line of input and then do something with it. Main. Um, so this is where it's, no. While well, one, error listening, malloc size of client. Okay. We Free e thread cancel unlock. Um, hmm. So, what does this do? C2 is equal to head, C2 not equal to null, and C2 arrow sock is not equal to C arrow sock. C2 is equal to C2 arrow next. So we're stepping through. Uh, if the socket, so we accept a socket. So this is where we s accept. What about if we go to where listen happens? Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, receive? Yeah, receive. Here it is. Okay, so the client, for each client, pthread self. Um, so cancel asynchronous. So we receive some amount, and then if the amount was zero that means end of file that means the socket is closed uh mm -hmm. and if it's a negative number that means the there was some sort of error error um, yeah but okay so after we receive we should be able to print so buff uh right this is wait oh yeah so this is uh getting the name which has to be at most 15 characters and then here's another receive. Okay, so this is the one where we actually get... Um, I guess we could, uh, right here, we could say, like, um, I guess after this part, we could say uh, printf um, percent s uh, 
What's up? I was well. Do you want to do the pre? Isn't the pre? Well, it just adds the less than sign, but it's the same thing. Like yeah. Um. Oh. Uh. Oh, so. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. I'm just saying, like, when the person connects, what they and they tell yeah. us what their name is, then we can say who they are. Uh, and then here we get an actual message from them. Let's see. Receive 1,024 minus... Uh, and then we go through every single client. Key thread, mutex text, lock. Oh, we're locking because we're starting to deal with that. Um, we don't need... We should be able to right here printf um, uh, I guess we could print exactly what we send what we would be sending so buff buff and possibly a new line um, what is buff by the time we get here Okay, so we put that, and then we put in whatever. Oh, that's why it's 1024 minus prefix. Buff plus prefix. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, does this... So, what, do, do you know what's going on here? This buff um... plus prefix and this 1024 minus prefix? So the prefix is the name repeated with the caret. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and yeah. We're adding buff plus prefix because um, we're sending that, like the message as well as that, like you need the... No. Uh, hmm? So buff huh. is an area in memory. That's, that's, that, that's, uh that's what like i like i meant by what you're sending like it's you need the space for the characters in your prefix right along with your message or no yeah so we're re and then yeah and then and then just to make sure i'm following then the next one is the amount of space for the actual like buff the message right like yeah okay yeah so yeah okay cool because that's what that's the data it's receiving right so yeah so, and, and and that's why it's like I like he used the variable n, which like means nothing, right? Which is a little hard, but but it's kind of like that's like a. I was thinking of it as like like a like a size like value, uh, yeah. the size of information, I guess. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. So, um, so this is where we want the stuff that we receive to go, and this okay. is how much stuff we can accept. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Because you can't go. You can't go past. Uh, your maximum is ten twenty four, but you have to account for the stuff in front of it. Yeah. So we've okay. we've already put into buff the name of the person and then a angle bracket in the Little, space. Yeah. Yeah. So when we receive some stuff from the socket, we need to put that stuff where. We're putting it directly into that same buffer, yeah. Um, but after the prefix stuff. Okay. So anyway, uh, so good. Um, so here we should be able to print that, and then as soon as we receive something, as long as it wasn't a an error, we can print out um, the stuff that we're gonna send to everyone else. So by right, the time we get right. here, buff already has the right thing in it. I think buff will not have a new line in it already um so, so that's yeah. why you're putting it back in right there like yeah yeah because uh, we, we we should have chomped it up at the top and we don't put it well so uh i guess it depends on what the client sends um, oh okay so the client could very well send something that has a new line at the end already yeah um yeah uh oh okay so I'm putting one in. Yeah. Uh, it's not a huge deal either <laughs> way, I think. Um, so let's uh, 
redo uh -uh. that. Okay, so now the client, uh, when the client connects, um, oops, it should, the server side should say immediately uh, that so-and-so, it'll say zero, and then it'll say so-and-so was identified, possibly on the same line. Um, possibly on the same, okay. Client name identified. Okay, so not on the same line. Um, and now the client is waiting for me to say something. So I'm going to say right. ASDF, and then the server prints that out now. Got it. Um, okay. So does that, how does that work for you? I guess uh, before I can, I, I'll pause for a yeah, little bit. Be yeah. Before I run it, uh, yeah. when I'm doing send here, I'm, I'm matching my earlier structure, but I'm changing it to input because that's what I'm sending, right, in this case? Uh, yes. Let me go back to the client. I think I have that right. I just wasn't cool. sure. Yeah. String yeah. length, input. Okay. Um, on, the, on the server side, the changes that I made, mm -hmm. um, I, like, really, I should have a mutex for standard out and lock it right. just before printing, but um, we can do that later. Uh, <laughs> okay. To do add a mutex for standard out. And then I just need my make. That's running. And I come over here. Are you able okay. to put them side that by worked. side? Uh, I I technically I should be able to. I have I'm having problems with that working, so I okay. just click like that's, an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I know that's, it's not that's great. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I no I I I like uh, I was trying to do that yesterday and it uh, it wasn't working and I was like what the okay yes it's working okay cool. okay cool um so uh so we have the ability to send from the client to the server and we can tell that that's working. Um, I guess now let's add something where the server will send a message back. We can just hard code something for now. Um, okay. Or we could try, since the server is, will send that message to all the different clients, we could connect a second client um, okay. We would have to do the timing right. Uh, I think it'll be easier just to have the server tell the client what the client just said. Um, and then uh, we can take that out later. I guess okay. we're going to have to be taking stuff out of the, the server later anyway. So let's go into the server. And right after the message is received, uh, we can also send it back. Um, so the client lock, we probably want to do it just inside of here. Um, again, not not a huge deal right now, but uh, let's see. So we want, so we have the Client lock, where is the send queue arrow sock? So we want to do this. And if it's, wait, if that's less than zero, less than or equal to zero, then we, R is equal to Q, Q is equal to Q arrow next, shut down. Oh, oh, okay, so if, if sending to a uh, client fails, wow, this is terse. Uh, yeah. um, so if if sending to a client fails, that means that client is dead. So we remove that client from the from everything. Okay. Uh, we we shut down our the. The server, so every connection um, on the computer, there's two sides to it. So the server has one side and the client okay. has one side. Um, if this happens, then the server knows that the client side, 
well, its connection is no longer valid. Its side okay. of the connection has died. So it uh, so then right. it'll do all the stuff it needs to to remove that client from the pool of things. Um, so it uh, so it removes it from the linked list. Uh, right. And shuts down the socket. Okay. And then it kills the or it cancels the thread for that client. Um. The thread that it has for that client, yeah. Um, and then it frees up the memory. Uh, okay, yeah, so inside of here, pthread, we want to... Uh, oh, we don't have... If Q is not equal to C, what if it is equal to C? We just go to the next one. So right here, yeah. we can do... Oh, geez. Uh, why is that like that? I don't know. Uh, I thought I set set variable C basic offset to two. Huh? It must not have been. Anyway, so now we can do send um on Q arrow sock the buff. And n plus prefix. Oh, okay, yeah. N plus prefix. Uh, zero, mm -hmm. and we'll just assume that that works. Um, okay. I guess if it doesn't, it would be found as soon as somebody else tries to send a message, and the server tries to send a message to the to this client. Anyway, so now we should be able to uh, let's kill and restart the server. Um, and now the client side, we need to update to listen. Mm -hmm. um, so right after uh, doing all this stuff, we send the message and then we want to receive from sock D into input. Um, what was input? Input is 1,024, 1,023, 0. And then we will uh, printf received from server. Uh, that and then a new line and then input um, maybe this name input isn't the best name uh, mm. but whatever I think that's okay for now um, so we receive up to that much I guess we need to make sure that the amount that we receive I'll call it n <laughs> Um, if it is, if n is less than or equal to zero, then we have a problem. Print f, uh, unable to receive from server. And then we'll exit negative one. And then, um, so otherwise, we can actually say what we received. We can say input at n is equal to the uh, null character. Um, I think receive will just copy bytes from the sock D, and it won't. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't add a null character there, because receive can be used for lots of stuff, not just text. Right. So it wouldn't make sense for it to add a null character. So n is okay. However many characters it received. Um. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make sure that there's a null character, uh, after that many characters. Although it should be anyway, because the thing that the server is sending back is going to be what we sent it plus a little bit. 
Um, and we started off the whole thing with nulls, so it should already be a null. Um, but that, uh, let's play it safe, I guess. Um, and before I move on, uh, I will pause okay. for a moment. Are you, uh, at the same spot? Yeah, it looks like you are. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, cool. So then let's go back to the server and the client, and then we'll make the client again, and then AS... A oh, A what? A S D F. There we go. Okay, cool. Receive from server. Client name A S D F. Cool, cool. I'm gonna do print that. Oh, typos. Okay. Input. Yep. I do that one a lot. Oh, printf. Printf. <laughs> I do a lot. <laughs> typos. And then my input to put the yeah. fly forty six. I'm sorry. <laughs> you should be. I'm so bad. Uh, okay, <laughs> chat. Client. <laughs> uh, client. Okay, okay. What did I do? GCC chat client. Cli client. Oh, God. I do that one all the time, too. Client. Yeah, like, okay. Char, char star without a cast. Input N. Uh, single quotes around the uh I string. do that so often, yes, yes. I did that I I caught myself doing that like four times yesterday. It's because nice. I've been doing Python and like they're so crazy, like let's do single, let's do double. I it drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah. I'm like, this matters. What are we doing, people? Yeah, there's a few things in Python that, that it feels like somebody was like they just did the first thing that came to mind and didn't think yeah. about I any failure cases, any way that this might be not a good idea. Oh, what did I do? This, oh, I forgot. Uh, I was, the message is really the name of my thing. Um, so that's fine. It, it snipped it. Okay. Uh, this received, this received from server, client name this. Wait, why does it say that twice? I don't know. Um, oh, you received have it twice. oh, I did. Have... I put it in twice. <laughs> I put it in twice. I mean, it worked. So the first one, which is before the check to see if it worked. worked. Yeah, yeah, I still said. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. All right. I don't know why I did it, but okay. Um, I think I started to, uh, I think I started to write this, it. and then I was like, oh, yeah, we need to yeah. check whether that worked. Um, so then I, yeah, I went before this line that makes and started sense. typing this other stuff. Um, okay, so uh, does it feel like you could do this on your own or no? Like if if no you... no it's okay. I mean, I no no it's just it makes like it makes sense what you're doing, but like we like I'm understanding it a little bit better now. But it was okay. like. It was like no foundation was provided, right? Like, it was just like, this is what, like, we're, we're doing this. And I'm like, what? Uh, right. So no explanation of, like, an overview of what the different steps what are. Thing? What are these Nothing. things? Yeah. No, it was just like, this is what's happening. And and it was okay. like, can you, like, uh, like, excuse me, I'm an idiot. Can you just give <laughs> me, like, some sort of, like, guidance here? No, no. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's because, like, because like i've had an uh another class that was supposed to go over like some basics for networking and they're like nah we don't care so i i just i i, I don't know why it's not really being taught but it just isn't at least i i don't know in the classes i've had um yeah I no also will it's never... not just the classes you've had i've i've taught a lot of students and compilers and networking they the people i don't it's something about those two subjects uh I, I think it's the mindset of like, oh, but you learn it so much better if you go discover it for yourself, like something like that. That is totally um, the attitude too. And I'm like, dude, I only have so much time. Like <laughs> it's like, yeah, I what am I in this class for then? Well, yeah, I could go discover it on myself money? without giving you yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. could do that. Just fine. <laughs> um I, I it's 
blow it's it's baffled me because this is the second time it's happened but at least what i will say in this case it's like oh we're actually doing something with it um whereas other classes were like just figure it out i'm like yeah. granted i'm never going to use it for what i do later however it's like i still would like to you know yeah. like learn about it i guess like make it so i'm not a total idiot you know <laughs> yeah like, um, i saw this interview with, with this guy this programmer who was like yeah um you know people were ta telling me i should like use libraries and stuff and i was like what why would i do that i'll just open port 80 and start reading the stuff that comes in over the um and that that kind of blew my mind of like wow uh i mean i guess you could do that uh it might work out fine um <laughs> bold like yeah pretty bold <laughs> oh my um, gosh uh yeah anyway um so then um i guess uh do you want to do you want to like slow down a bit and review what we just did and well okay so 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 like i i understand and i see like okay now now we're doing the send and receive commands so it can take input from uh the like from the user from the command line and then yeah. send 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 it to our um server but i guess like i guess what i'm like lost on because I don't understand what my actual objective is with like this assignment thing that we're doing. Like, is is this is this the case so where I it, run it and I'm I want it to give me prompts as a as a user and then I input messages for it to send? Like that that whole that's what I'm like also very lost on. Yeah, I think the stuff that we are doing here should be in the assignment. It should be two separate threads. And one thread will be responsible for doing scanf and then sending. Uh -huh. um, and then the other thread will be responsible for receiving and receiving? then printing. Okay. That's my guess. I'm I'm sure that's close to accurate. <laughs> also, like write a better assignment, bro. <laughs> like what are you yeah. doing? Do the, is there a, an assignment description no. somewhere? No, it's literally what I pasted into there, and oh, it, wow. yeah, wow, that's frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's that. It just says, uh, "It's just do that," and then he says in the in the lecture and stuff, "It's like make, make this." And I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> like, like I, what? And, what is and this? I, em I emailed him for clarification, and so did other people, and that was what we got back was that message I sent you, and I was wow. like. So I don't know. Again, I'm like, what is with this hatred with networking? Like, I don't. Why teach it then? Yeah. But whatever, that's fine. Gripes aside, this has been this has been very helpful though. Like, okay, uh, it's making it's making more it's making much more sense. Like, awesome. Um, yeah. So then let's. Uh, so do you do you want to go like read through this and or do you want to just like press on to making this be threaded uh we can press on like i i understand what's happening like at the beginning like okay. uh like or... i and i guess i guess my understanding of this is like this is the structure you use when you're talking to a server and like servers and clients are going to at least what i'm getting out of this assignment is they follow this kind of structure like this is the way that they work yep um, um and actually this is the same kind of struct that you use yeah. uh, server side or client side, right? I, I okay, like I noticed cool. those patterns, and I was like, like here with this. They, they, we call the listener. Uh, okay, yeah. Which, which I was also like, that was a weird name because isn't there listening happening on both sides? Like whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> um, but from the clients or what code is that? From the server's perspective. Is, yeah, yeah. Here. This it's is the server. listening to incoming connections to connections. that port. Right, right. So that um, makes sense. And then I guess, and and I'm understanding like this is this is the structure you need to set up your server. And then I did go through the manual like pages to see like okay, there's like some different ways you go about doing this, and I I see where we're pulling it 
uh like why why we used um like af inet and then the sock stream and the those manual notes it's just it's like i'm like this is a lot to process <laughs> Right. Also, why didn't you show me an example of a client, dude? Because <laughs> I did. What I did do was I started by looking at other examples online of like other clients people had written, but like I wasn't able to get them to work with my server, and I was like, I don't understand. Like I'm going in blind. So. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I was. I'm glad I was able to figure out how to get them working with your server. Um, I actually think it would be kind of cool if. So then we can we can press on. Let's let's go yeah. press on. Um, I think it would be kind of cool if instead of having a hard coded thing, we could uh, do what you had earlier. And if it's if it said, "What is your name?" Right. And then we read in. Uh, and again, maybe stirred data is not the best name. Uh, right. Or input rather input. Yeah, input is not the best name. So let's change that to uh, like they do. Uh, we can do input is now buff, buff, everywhere. Okay. Right. Um, and then, all right, so we'll scan into buff and right now we just say okay sending to everyone um i guess we don't need to say that we can just immediately send it and then uh now we want to split so like all of this could be single threaded there's no reason to actually well yeah i guess it depends do you want like at the very beginning uh when your client is starting up should it uh I think it actually it would make more sense for it to ask you for your username and then mm -hmm. connect. Right. Uh so let's do that. So let's put this up here. And so we'll need to move this up here as well. And what else? We'll scan. What is your name? Uh, then this also needs to go up there. What is your name? Scan in the name. If there was an error, then it dies. And then if there was not an error, then it tries to connect. Oh, I see. Um, then it tries to connect. And if the connection fails, then it dies. I guess we could have another exit here. Um... Very brittle client. As soon as, as soon as you <laughs> stare at it too hard, it'll die. Um, and then uh, let's see. So if that happens, and then I'll just do this. Uh, so detect errors and exit. Um, although, well, yeah, we can leave it as an exit. Uh, and then we try to send the name, then we, so right after this, this is where we, or actually just before this, uh, split into two threads, uh, one, oops, one thread for sending, uh, Uh, to server and other thread for listening to server. Uh, so sending to server and reading input from client. Um, so it'll be actually that's out of order, but uh, that'll be one of the threads. And then the other thread is listening to the server and printing to client, I guess. Uh, from user, I guess, would be a better name, user. So the program is the client program. The user is the person at the terminal. Um, OK, so then uh, so this would go in this thread. Uh, 
so let's go, I guess we could create a function that uh, we can start a thread using that function. Okay, hold um, on, hold on, hold on. Hold okay, on. Okay, Give okay, me just okay. a second. Hold on, I just want to make sure I, I moved my things around correctly. Uh, and then I, I, I was listening to you were oh, okay, cool. explaining cool. the the threads and i'm just like well hold on <laughs> my brain <laughs> sure okay. sure okay that makes sense i'm following that okay then then we connect and then you're saying at that point that's when you do the the multi-threading first one yeah. listens then the other one will be listening and at that point you were thinking of doing a function yep and what were you saying about the function uh one function would be for this thread, and then the other Got function it. would be for this thread. Okay, okay. And they would both need to know uh, the socket, sock D. They would both need sock D, and I think that's all they would need. Okay. Um... When you started a thread in the server, um, thread, uh, do you, how do you do it? Do you have pthread mutex in it? Client lock. Wait, what? Oh, okay. So we're starting. We're initiating the mutex, mutex lock. Uh, where do you? Hold on. How do you start the threads? Ah, uh, p thread, t i d, p thread, mutex, p thread create. Oh, here it is. Okay. Cool. Uh, right after that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So we create so, a thread. Yeah. And we take. The address uh, for that first initialization we had done earlier, right? Uh, ch -ch -ch. Um, and then it's set to null client. So that's a TID. <laughs> uh, yeah, which we set null... at the beginning of main. Yeah. Okay, and then we P drag it in here. Okay. And the. So the function client, where is that? Client. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, um, the uh, p thread create. Okay. This right here says call this function, uh -huh. and um. I forget the order of the arguments, but it's going to be, it's, so the thread is created and it calls this function. Um, and then what is C, C arrow sock size of, it's client. our malloc. Yeah. It's okay. So it is an address and let's go look up, uh, P thread C. create. Yeah. P thread create. Yeah. Um, so, uh, client, uh, one of those parameters is what ends up going here, what address goes here. Got um, it. Okay. How to create, actually, is anything done with P? Oh, okay. So it's that last one then. Um, so P thread. This last thing here is the argument to this function. Right. And then 
this, uh, and so this is which thread struct, and then this is maybe where the return value should go. Uh, yeah, let's look that up. C man p thread create. That would be the order in which um, function declarations happen. So. So p thread oh, adder. Okay, so it's options, I guess, about when the thread is started. Um. Okay. So, uh, the thing that goes here has to have this type. Okay, it has to be a void pointer. Yeah, in order okay. for p thread create to have a type, that Got it. um the function has. So there, there needs to be a function pointer here, and that function pointer is oh. that's this part here. It's a function pointer. So the name of a right. function is a function pointer. So oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. Here, this is a function pointer because this is the name of a function. And, Got it. Uh, do they declare client up here? Uh, yes. So they declare it ahead of time as having this type. Got um, it. So then by the time you get to pthread create, um, and so the reason it has to have, or the reason it has this signature is so that um, the return type could be anything and the argument could be anything, and it's the address of something, so that you can put a struct there and so if you need like six arguments you could create a struct with six arguments and that'll be the struct holding the arguments that you that you want in your routine so say that one um, more time so client um so if we wanted to it uh -huh. looks like here this client is the only the only thing that's actually used but like let's say that we had some other thread um where what we want to do is have a function that looks like uh int a int b int c let's say yeah um we can't make a function that looks like this Right. Uh, and send it in to the pthread create because pthread create expects a function that has only one type here. Got it. Got um, it. So, but um, when people make functions, they want to be able to have different kinds of arguments. Right. So the way the way they got around in C, the uh -huh. you have to have a specific function type, but you want to have you want to allow for any kind of function. Um, the way they get around that is uh, here, your function, you just have to write it so that it takes in a void pointer, P, and uh -oh. then you can create a struct um, fun, oops, fun args yeah. that is int A, int B, int oh. C, and then inside of here, you can do, uh, you cast, you can do struct fun args pointer um, args is equal to uh, cast struct fun args pointer cast p into a fun args pointer and then now you can do args arrow a to get oh okay thing. okay so that requires just before creating the, th the thread you have to create one of these structs um oh okay okay and fill in the fields and so that's exactly what uh the teacher's code does is doing okay with with that like uh, the, i think it was client right? client yeah so that's yeah, this thing point. here so we have a struct oh. client and we fill in the different fields so these are the different things that the function called client is going to need to use at some point oh okay that makes way more sense okay cool um 
Yeah, I... Uh... That was something that I found out after a lot of... Like, that's another thing that it kind of seems like they just expect you to know somehow. <laughs> um, well, I... Like... Like that's that's a lot of like function and nuance. Like that that's like foundational stuff. Like oh, like yeah. why we're doing this, and I feel like that's lacking sometimes. Where it's like it's just yeah. the way it's done. I figured, I I figured it would be like news to you the stuff that I just yeah. said. Yeah, never heard <laughs> um, that. That's awesome. Okay. So then, uh, same thing for this this part here. This is a void pointer because fun. Okay. Uh needs to, well it needs to have for the p thread create has to have a specific type so in order to, to allow void. for returning okay. yeah yeah okay. anything that you want to return you just return some address and then whatever function yeah uh is dealing with yeah anyway um okay so um it's kind of on you as a programmer to not screw this up the okay. type system doesn't help you here uh, right here right you're explicitly right. casting to something um yeah so uh c's type system is great except in some times um, yeah, except for sometimes yeah uh yeah uh okay so then so that's that's what is up with this function's signature um, yeah and like why would you and pass an avoid pointer only to immediately cast it? Although I'm, uh, oh, I guess there's no like warnings turned on. I bet if I turn on warnings, um, yeah, it'll complain, um, about casting or about using a pointer as a different type without a cast. Oh. Um, where is the make file? There it is. So we could do dash w error mm -hmm. and dash w all and pedantic um maybe i shouldn't turn all of those on let's see what happens so server oops uh i think i've modified the file oh do i still have um i think i have this Oh no, yeah. I got rid of it. Okay. Um, so then let's try building that. Okay. I guess it still compiles. I am surprised. I thought you needed a cast there. But I guess not. Okay, so then in the client side, let's go do something similar. Um if all you need is one address length worth of data then right. you don't need to create an extra struct. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what we're going to need on the client side. There's only one client on the client side. There's only one thing to deal with. There's no linked list. There's no... Right. So, I, so it might be that we can get away with um, not doing that. So um, we need uh, threads. So I'll just steal that unless it's already in here, but I don't think so. It is not. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, and I will alphabetize a little bit. Um, okay. And then, uh, so, uh, then we need to, I guess let's just, uh, copy what the server does. So P thread T, um, what would, I think you would just need to create two different threads. Really, you only need to create one thread. Um, right. Because you already have one. So, and then do you need to, I guess you need to be able to kill that thread. So, yeah. So, let's create uh, a thread ID and then um, p thread. Uh, do we need a mutex? Um, let's see. One thread is going to be sending to the server and reading user input. The other thread is going to be listening for input from the server and printing stuff to the user. I think we don't need a mutex at all for that. Um, 
So then pthread mutex in it. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do... Ah, pthread cancel, though. We want to be able to cancel the thread. So... Um, we could make it so that when the when the user types in exit, I guess, um, we okay uh, cancel the other thread, and the other thread can be the one listening for input from the server. Um, so then, uh, so let's um. Let's see. Uh, let's do. Let's make the the one thread, the thread, this thread, that is reading input from the user and then sending it to the server. Okay. Um, and by make a thread, what I really mean is make a while loop. Yeah. That goes while, forever. Okay. Yeah, while one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we can printf. Um, I guess we don't need to print anything to begin with, um, but we can receive. Oh, did I get rid of the receive? No, nope, there it is. OK, cool. And we can actually, I think we can just yank that and put it right there. OK, uh, so as soon as we receive anything, we, unless it was an error, we print it. Um, and I think we can just print it uh by itself plus the new line the message from the server will not have the new line on it at least if i remember correctly um cool okay so then so that's that's that thread um and then before that thread we need to spawn the other thread. So pthread t pid or tid uh no not pthread t uh what was it? Um pthread no yeah it is. Okay cool. Uh and then we want to be able to cancel at some point but first we have to create. So we can do pthread Create and give it the address of that thread ID, and then there's no flags. And we will, what do you want to call this one? So, this is the one for uh, listening to the server and printing to the user. Um, what, what would you call that? I mean, like readout? I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. Sure, readout. Um, and then the argument, I don't think it needs any argument either. Um, here they give it C. I don't really see, uh, I guess we'll find out. Um, so let's create a method, uh, method, uh, function called readout, which has the right signature. Um, Oh, did I tell you that I was like trying to commit to the Linux kernel? Yeah, you did, and they oh, accepted okay, it, right? Yeah, they did. Yay. Like, yeah. And now I've done it like yeah. seven times. <laughs> seven times? I had yeah. heard like a. It was like much earlier, so it must okay. have been before b before this latest one. So that's exciting. Cool. Yeah, super exciting. All right, so uh, we want a method that looks like that, um, and then down here we can do. Uh, readout. Um, so we need to. Oh, I guess we do need we need the the PID. Um, but uh, so we can kind of cheat. Uh, so the or not the PID. We need the SOC D. So uh, we can. We we are not bound here to actually send in an address. We could mm -hmm. send in. Uh, whoops. That was weird. Uh, we could send in sock D. Um, mm -hmm. we are bound here to have this type for this variable, 
Um, but what we can do this. We can do sock D is equal to cast uh, to an int underscore sock D. So here we've declared that it is an address, but we know that it's actually sock D. Oh, so then so we... we're just going to use it as sock D. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And then that makes sense. What's happening? Be able to receive. Um. Oh yeah, we want to do this in a loop. So while one. Um. My is that the ten minute or the? Okay, yeah, that's the ten minute warning. Um. Whoops. Uh, okay. I, I assume you have another student, but um, I'll, I'll book more time for later. I do have another student, but he yesterday was like, hey, you know how I have time booked tomorrow? Um, can yeah. I cancel it? And I was like, well, if I find somebody else, and then I, I, I was like, I, I had some other people ask, and I told them, and I showed them that I was all booked up, and, mm -hmm. um, and then he was like, no, don't tell them that, because like, what if I want to? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's your call. Like, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm game to keep going, or I can, I can book more time later. It's well, no. Works so, best. so, uh, I'm going to switch over and see if gotcha. he's there. Okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah. I'll, so I'll hang out, and and if if he doesn't show up or anything, just message me, and I'll jump back in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um. Okay. So we want to receive, and then we need the sock D, and we need a buff. So I guess we can create a buff here. Um. Where? What kind of thing was buff? A char. I think char. Just yeah. Steal that. Okay. And then uh, we need int n is equal to the receive size. Um. Wait a minute. Hold on. What am I doing? Uh, one thread for sending to the server. Yeah, this this is actually what should go in there. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, and then, well, I guess since we already have this up here, we can leave it up here. We want <laughs> to send to the server down here. Down here, uh, we sent, not receive. Yeah, I, I lost track of which thing I was doing where. Um... So, so unable to receive from server, yeah, otherwise we'll just print. So one thread listening to the server, and the other thread uh, sending to the server and reading user input. So, um, so first we need to uh, get user input. So buff, uh, what was it, scanf. Yeah, buff equals uh, scan up. Into buff, and we want to um, int result is equal to that, and I think scanf will put in the null character for you. Wait, wait hold on. Yeah, if it result. didn't. Yeah. If it didn't, mm -hmm. there would you wouldn't have a way of knowing. Yeah, so I think because yeah. it it just uh, so if a uh, result is not equal to one, then uh, printf um, unable to read from standard in uh, and we will just exit one for now um like ideally we would do something where we communicate back to the other thread uh yeah um so we read from the client read from the user then print to the server and i guess we should do result is equal to that and if result is less than or oops ah less than or equal to uh zero then we want to print f um 
unable to send to server uh, and exit. I'm not sure if you call exit from a thread. Does that kill the entire program? I think it does. Um, and I think that might be all we need to do. We don't need to worry about joining because this is a forever loop. And so is mm -hmm. this. I guess we could do something like, um, oh shoot. Uh, well, so if we made this one be the, the one that reads from the keyboard, mm -hmm. then we could look for the word exit and exit if that happens. Okay. Uh, so maybe we should do that. Okay. Um, so I'll move the body of this down here and then take the body of this and move it up there. And then what else? Move the comment. Okay. You did like a so, full swap for the function, right? Yeah, why is that not? Um, is that going to work? No. What the heck? Whatever. It's fine. Hey, it's what? fine. Okay, so uh, we listen one thread for sending to the server and reading input from the user. Yeah, so I'm going to also swap these two. One thread for reading input from the user and sending to the server. Um, unless the input was the word exit. So yeah. if uh, string compare buff uh, exit is equal to zero, then um, p thread cancel. Um, TID, and that would mean that we would need to put in here uh, the cancel, where was that, client, uh, that one is the two minute warning. Uh, That's okay, I've got to clean this up anyway, I think I made a mess. Set cancel type, <laughs> so... Um, so we get the, and then pthread detach. I'm not sure. Maybe we need both of those. Um, but we would do those inside of here. Uh, and then we would be able to call pthread cancel and exit uh, zero. Uh, maybe we could uh, printf by. Yeah. Uh, just to see if we got there. And dang it. Um, <laughs> um, highly doubt it, but let's see. Nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's all right. Okay. Um, oh, right. We need to, here we need to cast to avoid pointer, and then probably there's some other stuff. All right. Well, <laughs> next time. Well, maybe not. I'll see. I'll, yeah. I'll look. All I'll right, hang bye. out in chat, and then okay. I'll book time. So thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.